good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you have to watch this video going Tokyo coming at you with um like a bit of kind of weird tutorial-y stuff. It's been a hot minute since we've talked and today we're gonna be talking about clocks like this clock here. And that's funny, I don't remember setting it to go down whatever uh, but we're going to be talking about you know making your own digital clocks and some different ways to do that uh, simple animation effects and making your own uh, completely unnecessarily complex sequencer because uh, I do like to make things a little bit over complex uh, every now and then just because it's it's a little bit fun and it can be kind of all right that um, that seems to be a bit of a problem everything is banging and banging is usually a sign that uh, Things have gone kind of wonky. Um, oh, oh, okay. We're filling up with water. That's that's not that's never good. That's that we don't we would like this to not happen. We'd like this to stop. Maybe the battery has got to come out. Maybe the battery's got to come out. Okay. Um, not great. Not great. Uh, not a lot of. Oh, geez. The, the clock is really getting low there. Um, maybe the switch is going to come over here and. Uh, yeah. Okay. There's another button. Let's hit that button. Uh, woof. Okay, okay, uh, the, the ringing has stopped, the danger lights have gone off, the clock has stopped, uh, but the water has not gone down, and we, I think we should go, we should go backstage before anything else breaks, uh, because I, this seems like it could be detrimental to our health, but let's, uh, we're gonna go backstage and we're gonna see you there, see ya! Alright, here we are backstage, and we're going to be taking a look first at a modified version of Scorp Skull's LBP2 digital clock. I'm going to put the link to the tutorial in the video description. If you haven't seen it before, if you're not familiar with the build, I highly recommend that you give it a look. One, because it's just very well put together, it's very clear, it's very easy to follow. But two, it's going into a lot of the nitty gritty of wiring that we're not going to be taking a look at in this video. We're going to be focusing on the engine of how it works. Now, if we take a look at the clocks now, hit the button and they're moving in a chronological fashion, no problem. But if we hit this button, we see that this clock starts to count downwards. If we hit it again, it starts to count upwards again and again and so we want to take a look at how that has been uh, affected how we pulled that off and I set up a, a very basic version of these clocks just the the guts of them basically and for Scorp Skull's clock the engine of it is a one second timer that we've set to 0 0.1 so that we can see the, the changes a little bit more clearly and quickly but it's feeding into a 10 port selector. The top port would be going to the number zero, the bottom port would be going to the number nine. Every time it hits that top port again, it's going to move the next selector in line down. And when that hits the top port, it's going to be moving this next selector down. And so that it would be counting upwards in the number every time the previous select the selector uh, cycles. But if we want that moving in the reverse direction, and since we want it going both ways, we're going to be needing a bunch of directional combiners. And we're going to be needing, needing a bunch of power nodes to tell the combiners uh, which input that it should be paying attention to. So if we go over to the engine here, let's set this to uh, the first port. We turn this on. And we see that it's feeding into the uh, positive side of the directional combiner, which is causing the selector to move downwards like a selector normally would. But if we flip the selector here, and that turns on this power node feeding into the negative side of the directional combiner, and it's got that selector moving in reverse. So now that sorts our ones position for seconds. And to get the rest of the selectors moving in the appropriate direction, we're going to need some more directional uh, combiners. And for positive side, coming like with Scorp Skulls, coming off of the number one port for zero, feeding into a power node. And if you need to know how to make those power nodes, take any bit of logic that's got an output, pull it out a little bit, delete the connection, uh, delete the wire, and now you've got a power node that you can wire up any way that you want to. But we've got that power node is feeding into the positive. And since when it's moving backwards, it's going to be flipping off of nine, then we've got another power node in the bottom position that would be feeding into the negative. And both of these are turned on, like the original power nodes, through this selector 
here. So if we change it, and we can see that now the top node is uh, turned on, so it's allowing that signal to go through to the next directional combiner. So you've got something that you can change the direction of time on the fly. Maybe if you're doing a level where there's uh, some mechanism that turns back time and you can reflect that visually in the environment by having clocks in the environment start to run backwards when the effect is active. Uh, that's one way that you could use this. I'm going to turn these off. But it's a, it's a relatively simple system. Even the modified version isn't really that difficult to set up. It just it ends up being a, a lot of wiring, a lot of gluing, and uh, but once you've got it set, it's it's really easy to use. Uh, it's fairly elegant, and like I say, it's very very intuitive. Now we are going to take a look at another clock. This is a, a counter note based clock timer that uh, Kronos designed and shared with me, shared with the community. Uh, but we'll take a look at that, and we will see you there. See yas. Alright, so here I am back from my break and we've got our uh, counter note based clock that Kronos has provided for us and it's just a regular clock, it, it just, uh, it's a timer that goes upwards. We haven't figured out a way to make it easily go downwards, although Kronos and I did talk about it a little bit on stream, uh, but it's it's very elegant, it's very nice looking and it's, it's a lot easier to kind of set up and manage once you know how it's working and what's going on in its guts, which we are going to take a look at right now. So we fly out and we take a look at our circuit board. I put some extra notes here just so that uh, you'd be able to see it, but a lot of these I would strip out if I was using this in my actual sets. And we've got our... Hit me on the screen. Uh, we've got our timer. Just a regular one second timer. And, you know, when, when it goes on, it feeds into a bunch of different counters. We've got some real counters, real-time counters here, all labeled time. And these are set for 10 for the seconds. And 6 for the tens positions for seconds. 10 for the ones position for minutes. And now, since my shows can't go beyond uh, 60 minutes, I've left this to be both a display and a time counter, and it's set to 6. But if you were expanding this, and this would get set to 5, and you would have another one uh, set to 6 on this side for the time. But these here are keeping the actual time. But we don't want to display that to the viewer, because it'll look uh, weird if you see, like, the number 10 in your clock. Uh, so we've got these counters, and their attendant notes are set a little bit differently. The uh, ones position for seconds is set to 9. The tens positions for seconds set to 5. The ones position for minutes is set to 9. And then since, as we said, this one is doing double duty, that this is set to 6. The notes, and these notes are all copies of the notes that we see here, that the, the player would see, or the viewer would see. These notes are set to signal strength. And their max value is set to the same as the display counter. So max value of 9 here, max value of 9 here, but max value of 5 here, max value of 5 here. So it'll read correctly to the player, even though these display counters, like I said, they are only for display. They're not actually keeping the time. So the way that it's doing that, the timer feeds in to our display for seconds and our time counter for seconds, the display for seconds doesn't reset by itself. It resets when the time counter gets to its max value of 10. So that will reset the display seconds there, and it will reset itself, and it will feed into the counter for time for 10, uh, the tens position for seconds, and into the display counter for 10, for seconds, 
and then that the time counter will go into the time counter for one minute and the display counter for one minute it will reset itself and it will reset the display counter and then again for here that this will reset itself when it fills up it will reset its display counter and it's outputting into this uh, tense position for the minutes that seems a little bit weird uh, but once like you've got it set up it pretty much runs itself it's, it's very very easy to set one thing that we do need to remember with this clock is that these have to match so if we let's turn this off for a moment here we go uh, if we wanted this for example to display eight seconds then this would also need to be set when you start to eight if you have these mismatched, and that's why I, I set them to the same color, so as an easy reminder that these have to be the same. Uh, if you don't have them matched together, you'll start to lose uh, numbers when it's counting up. The display will not match what the actual like timer is timing, and that just gets really weird and wonky. So make sure that those are matching up, but basically that's it once you've got this set and I use this I've been using this clock for about the last year in my shows and it's just like it's really easy just to go in and get it set up now it has uh, some negative sides to it that the other clock does not while it is elegant it's a little bit easier to work with and I just like it a lot it's, it's a really really good clock uh, there there are a few issues and one issue is that you are limited in how your numbers are going to look because uh, if we go to our one of our display tags or one of our display notes you've only got those couple of fonts in there so if, if one of these fonts like doesn't do it for you well too bad basically like you you've got to make it work so if, if it's not like working with what your level is doing it's not like the the style that your level has got then maybe this clock is not going to work uh, for you another issue with it is because notes will always try to orient uh, they'll they'll always be kind of up and down like this so if you had your clocks moving for some reason like this one here and you see that the numbers are just seesawing all over the place they look kinda weird you know kinda weird uh, so if if your clock is going to be just like straight dead on like this and there's really no problem at all but if your clock has got any kind of cant to it then you get a situation where the the numbers just don't look right although I mean it does look kinda cool uh, it just depends if like that's what you want with your uh, you know with what you're showing to the player now we could see that with this clock here because all of the numbers are either sticker panel or they are hologram although there are ways to get around that with um, with actual materials like cardboard uh, but because they are an actual object and they're glued together they all stay together so you can have them on a wobble like this you could have them going up and down or if you wanted to uh, just have it on a tilt like the number the numbers are still going to be aligned properly uh, as far as what the clock would look like so you've got a little bit more freedom there uh, also with this style of clock uh, you don't have to necessarily like use the font sets that you would have in the game like the font sets for numbers I find uh, in LBP are really quite limited and especially for things like clocks uh, some of them look nice in signage but aren't really super readable where you would want the clock to be immediately recognizable like what the numbers are uh, representing you've got this set from the seaside surprise set that's kind of blah looking but at least it's very readable 
And you've got this number set from the Journey Home set that's got a little bit more character to it. And it's, again, it's very readable, but both of those are DLC. And the Journey set, the Journey Home set, you need to do, like, everything with multiplayer to get the full font set for letters and numbers. And I hate that so much. Like, that honestly makes me a little bit angry, because a lot of players aren't going to have those available to them. But... Because it is sticker panel or holo panel, you can make your own font set, you can make your own number set in paint, and you can do something that's maybe a little bit more appropriate if you don't, for example, want this blocky style, uh, this kind of future hologram style in your level. You could make a more horror style font if you, if you so desired in paint and then use those on sticker panel and get the effect that you're looking for there. You could also do things like not even using numbers but like a cipher or an alien numbering system where maybe like a, a triangle is one and a, like a burst mark is four and like a like the predator counting system uh, that you know, got the countdown timer to the self-destruct for the predator. Uh, you could do that with these as well whereas you, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do that with uh, Cronus's clock but I'm going to be honest, like, for my purposes, I kind of like Cronus' clock a lot more. I think it's a, it's a really, really nice clock. It just looks really good, and it's, it's just very easy to work with. Now, I know I said in the intro that we would be talking a little bit about animation, and we'd be talking um, a little bit about sequencers, but I feel like this video is probably getting a bit overlong as it is, so I'm going to break those into their own separate videos coming out either this week or in successive Fridays, um, but I, I don't think that to try to cover everything in one video, it's just going to get kind of massive. So I think that pretty much does it for us here this go about. So from me, Fisco, here in Tokyo, to all of you out there, wherever you may happen to be, thank you, thank you, arigato, arigatou, arigatou, sayonara, see you, and ciao.